And we're back. With some more oxygen not included. And today, before we start on today's mission, which is to knock out, I think, all but two of the achievements, we should be able to get most of them today, actually. We want to have a quick look over here at, where is it, Blum Isle. Now, after we finish the achievements, what I want to do is something a little odd. What I want to do is I want to turn this oil planet into a massive power generator. There are five oil reservoirs here. One, two, three, uh, there's a fourth and a fifth over there. I'm going to take all five of them, start running them, and build a giant sour gas boiler on this planet. With the goal being, this being a massive power exporter. We're going to take this planet, just churn it full of natural gas, and then we're going to fire that natural gas out onto the map to all the other planets. I believe there's ten, oh, ten planets on it here. So we'll be able to send out about a kilo of natural gas to each planet to provide all of their power needs. However, that also gives us water. You see, when you burn natural gas like this, that natural gas produces carbon dioxide and it also spits out polluted water. That polluted water can be changed into clean water, the clean water can then be turned into oxygen and, well, a little bit of hydrogen as well, but we can use that to oxygenate the base, meaning with one fell swoop we can provide power and oxygen. And not only that, its byproduct is carbon dioxide, so we could run a bunch of slicksters down here, and those slicksters could be a potential food source. So, well, my normal plan would be keep all of this hidden until the end and then there's the big reveal, but then normally what happens is I make some silly mistakes or people point out things that would have been smarter to do. So I thought I'd, thought I'd open it up to the floor so if other people want to come up with interesting designs or takes on it that I could potentially steal and rip off to help with my own design, which uh, I probably won't be doing for another week or two, but you know, it, maybe maybe you want to get working on it. Also, uh, I should probably start doing some uh, base living videos again, so uh, th th kind of inspiration for that. But there is other things we get. For example, when we make that natural gas using a sour gas boiler, we also get our hands on sulfur. So we can launch the sulfur over as well, and that sulfur can be used to either grow crops or run sweetles. There's more than one way to uh, build yourself a sustainable base. And the plan would be sort of move to a planet, build a sustainable base with our production, our, our builder dupes. So say three to six dupes would come along, build a little base, and then we would put down a small colony of, say, four duplicates. Uh, of course, all of them would need someone to look over them. Yes, there we go. That's a much better view. Someone to, to watch over the little colony, and we'd have, that, that would be the end goal. Have one little mini colony built on every single panel with a statue of a coup. Yeah, well, for those of you who don't know, this is from Samurai Jack. It's, a, it's an old show. Never mind. But anyway, yeah, that would be the plan. Now, so if you've got any ideas, go for it. I mean, we could also go with lots of wild arbor trees, but that feels a little bit too easy. I kind of like the idea of industrializing the hell out of a planet to make just a massive sour gas boiler and having it provide pretty much all our needs on every planet. Another thing you'd probably want to look out for is this polluted water. How do you sieve it? Because you can't just... What, are you going to have to fire over sand as well? Or would you like to make this a giant steam room and then sieve it that way by boiling all the water? There's uh, there's, there's more than one way to do things, but uh, we'll see what people come up with. And what I come up with in the end, that's going to be... Uh, anyway, that, that, that's enough of that. Next, back on Calderon here. It's about time we left. We have collected everything we want. We've even taken a whole bunch of granite with us. Uh, we stuck in a little drop-off and automatic dispenser here and dropped off all this stuff. Turns out... Well, the Atmo suits ran out. We only had, at one point we only had one Atmo suit left. However, there's there's lots of oxygen in here. It turns out there was plenty of oxygen, and we could just so long as they held their breath from here to the door, they were able to run in here and do all the things they needed to do. Now, uh, over here, I've stuck in a bunker door, so there's somewhere to land on later on. Someone was warning me that this place gets hit with a meteor shower when you activate this temporal tear. So if we look at uh, Filful Filful Fatel, we can't go back here anytime soon. Namely, because there's nowhere to land except if we open those doors, drop off the regolith, and land on top of it. So, we have stuck ourselves in a landing spot back on Calderon. So, let's uh, get everyone out of here. We've got the whole... Oh, before we go, I should probably point out how this is going to... How we're going to rad bolt up this temporal terror generator. Well, we have two auto sweepers, a storage bin full of wart seeds and phosphorite. And what we're going to do is go... Hey, do that. And they will load all the wart seeds in. This will start cranking up the radiation. What do we have to... Uh, 700, 900, come on. They've got to uh, apply a little bit of fertilizer to everything. And done. So, radiation wise, we're looking at 1400 rads, 1300 rads, 14, and 1300. Until the phosphorite runs out. Yep. What we'll do is we'll hook that up. I've uh, left power wires right there, so you can see there's actually a conductive wire sitting there, so we can hook those up. This way, we're able to hook them up one after the other instead of having all three of them fire simultaneously, which would fill it up too quickly. Alright, time to get you guys out of here. We're going to move your platform back up a little bit. Uh, there, I think? 
All right, I think we've got the rocket back to its original configuration. The uh, the fuel and oxygen are all on the bottom, and we've even stuck on an artifact transport module. Reason being, we can, on our way home, go pick up an artifact. There is a little demolished rocket over here. We can pop over there and grab that before we head home. And what are we missing? Control station. Oh, yeah, that would that would probably be important. I always stick in one of these little power wheels. They make running a rocket so much simpler. Actually, should really do a tutorial on how to build one of these damn things. They're just, they're kind of dense, and the amount of things that are going on are a little bit crazy. And uh, let's hope this rocket doesn't scorch the whole place as it takes off. It'll probably be fine. Oh, and we've somehow managed to knock out an achievement. Uh, one second, let's see what the temperature goes on like down here. Ooh, okay, so it, it'll melt a little bit of the ice. Ooh, okay. You better not overheat that smart battery. That smart battery powers the cable that runs all the way over there. Uh, yeah, that powers the actual auto sweepers that keep those things sorted. You yeah, know, the temperature's fine. Maybe that is steel, right? Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's okay. It's okay. Everyone's now sorted. Uh, this thing should fill up in a reasonable time frame. You, uh, connect those up in the last bit. And now we have those four running. We should be able to make this... Actually, we should be able to top this up quite quickly. We're 12% charging. All right, achievements, though. Uh, the colony achievement we're in this time around is a bit o a bit odd. It's the not zero Kelvin, but pretty cool. Coldest building, 6.9. I don't know how that knocked out. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me because I loaded up the save and that was knocked out. I think it bugged out or something because I was checking and to get it, we would have to go down to minus 260 something. And we don't have any buildings close to that. The closest building we've got is this gas pump over, or this liquid pump, which is minus 254. So, yeah, I've no idea how that happened. But things we are planning on knocking out this round. Cluster conquest. Land rovers or dupes on all worlds in the cluster. Only one planetoid left to go. Uh, six GMO AOK. -okay. Successfully analyze a mutated Nosh Sprout. I think we can actually knock that out this turn as well. This one, Mind the Gap, that might be up until the next one. We've still got about 530 tons of stuff to do. Or sorry, 540 tons of stuff to do. Totally tubular, that is also the second one I'm worried we won't get done today. But The Great Escape, that should be doable today. And Cosmic Archaeology, that should be doable today. All we need to do is find four more space artifacts. And those we're actually pretty close to. So, we have a rocket ship headed down here, and I know for a fact we have not touched any of these before, namely because they're beyond range of our rad rockets. So, this should be able to come down here, pick up a, an artifact here, 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 and here, and then head back home with it. And if we're lucky, this one will also pick up a unique artifact there, giving us five, meaning, well, we've got we've got a little, a little bit of leeway. Then, if that doesn't work out, then we'll have to come out here to these interstellar oceans and pick up a bunch more. But I think... I think we should be able to manage it. While all of that is going on, we are going to deal with Nosh Brats. Now, Nosh Brats are a bit of a problem for us because they have to be between minus 25 to 0 degrees. We haven't quite hit that temperature down here. We're down to about 12 to 15, and uh, I thought we were going to have to come down here and use super coolant until someone pointed something out to me. Why am, I, why am I bothering to do it down here when I can just go over here and do it? Realistically, we have, okay, it's not the best rads, but we're looking at about a thousand rads in here because if we put in the wheeze warts, it's also at the correct temperature. All we have to do is change the atmosphere here to carbon dioxide and we can just grow some nosh sprouts in here. Odds will be lower, but we can put in more of them, so why not? All we got to do is turn this whole place into carbon dioxide and get our hands on some ethanol. Now, ethanol, I'm thinking we're going to put down here. We've got a bit of space, so I'm thinking this is as good a location as any. While dealing with this, we got a notification that one of our pilots has come back home. I can't even remember what I sent them out to harvest. But what did you come back with? Oxygen, carbon dioxide, and ice. Perfect. We will fuel you back up and send you right back out on your way again. Uh, yeah, off you go. And we can also remove the office mug. We have so many office mugs. While we wait for the rocket to be refilled full of oxalite, we do have one rocket that has arrived at its destination, the Explorer, and it has picked up... An office mug. God damn it. Okay, I'm beginning to think that all of these uh, demolished rockets, destroyed satellites, and ruined rockets only have office mugs because that's all I've gotten. I think the only way to get the special artifacts is to go to the, the asteroid fields or the debris clouds. That may be the only way to get them. That might explain why we've got six of them. We've got one, two, three, and I'm pretty sure we went to that one, four, five, six. Yeah, we've already went to six, or wait, no, was it helium cloud? Whatever, we went to about six of them so far. So I'm thinking once we get these four, we should have nailed them. Well, that is my sincere, sincere hope. Our rather complicated looking map of 
passing ships in the night. Uh, we've got one over here, our, our basically our one that's gone at hunting for artifacts. And please tell me it's not a coffee mug. It's a modular nuclear power plant. Okay, a, a model. Sorry, it's a model of a nuclear power plant. Okay, that's... I don't think we have one of those. Yeah, that'll count. That works. Perfect. All right, then. Uh, oh, and there's also a um, an observer on board, as in they have a telescope. So they'll be able to explore even more of the place around here. So once we get out to there, actually, we should be able to see if there's anything else nearby. And I would like to maybe find out what that is before we go. For our next potential artifact in three, two, one. Come on, enter it. And shield generator. Yes, that is. I, I don't think we have one of those. Um... Okay, you know what? We'll do this one first. And then that will explore pretty much everything down here. Once that's done, we can go over here, explore that. And then we'll see how much fuel we have left. How many? We've got Ranger Mini 22. So we might even be able to get there and back. Uh, let's not hope too much, but uh, maybe. All right, ethanol. We were producing you, yes, down here. This year is going to be where we produce the ethanol to feed to our Nosh Brides so that we can mutate the Nosh Brides to make the... Um, Ah, the mutated nosh brides. Whatever. This connects up in here. Now, this is an ethanol distillery. We throw in 600 kilos of lumber, and that will start spitting out the ethanol. There we go. And the ethanol is going to come out a little bit hot. But there you go, 500 grams per second. That gets dumped down here. It's going to be a little warm, but that's okay. We've got it beside a whole bunch of ice, so fine, I suppose. Then, once this gets to a point where there's 50 kilos of ethanol in here, it stops. It just... Turns off. Uh, how are you doing? Pitcher pump is looking good. All right, so now that produces the ethanol for us. We don't really need that much of it. That ethanol is going to get shipped over here and given to these Uh What's wrong with you? Oh, atmosphere. Yeah. Mm. And where is the last one? A waiting delivery. Er, it's... Guys, come on, seriously. You're... The farmers in this place are supposed to be incredible and it's taking them forever to get around to this. All right. Farm station needs to go. We need to start filling this place up with carbon dioxide. And uh, Nushbrets require a carbon dioxide atmosphere, but that shouldn't be too hard. A quick gas pump to suck out all of the oxygen out of the room. It shouldn't take too long. And then we can chuck in some carbon dioxide. What's the pressure? Minimum pressure, 150 grams. Please don't bother. A uh, canister empty over here. We're going to throw in some carbon dioxide when the time comes, but not just yet. To uh, collect that carbon dioxide, we actually have a giant pit of the stuff down here, so yeah, we'll just start pumping that now. That'll pump the carbon dioxide up here and into these two canister fillers. Yeah, we're going to use canister fillers, I know. Madness. But those canister fillers will allow us to manually move a whole bunch of carbon dioxide in here and uh, get these nosh sprites growing. Oh, oh, and the rocket has went to the next one. Please tell me you've got another thing. You've got a shield generator and a grub grub statue. Yes? Just... Yes. Uh, okay, then move again. We're going to get you to go over to whatever radioactive thingy move. What's it? Once you get to the radioactive thingy, you should be able to scan that sector too. Damn, this thing has damn good scanning range. Ooh, I wonder if that Russell's teapot. That would be my guess. It's furthest at the edge. Well, okay, actually, that could also be Russell's teapot. That could also be Russell's teapot. But it would be nice if it was. All right, let's see what we get on this one. If we get another unique artifact here, that means we can knock out the uh, one of the achievements. Well, considering this entire place is starting to stifle from lack of atmosphere, I think that's enough. We can deconstruct that, and we can start bringing in some carbon dioxide. In fact, we'll make that a high priority. We want to get our crops growing again. Ooh, scalding. Someone's come home. Uh, Scott has. Excellent. That's another rocket ready to go. Excuse me while I turn back on the refueling. Yeah, the refueling process is still very, very annoyingly manual. But we're getting there. All right, carbon dioxide has been deployed. Now, all we need to do is get the temperature in here just a tiny tad lower. We need it to be at zero degrees. Well, the great thing about water is it doesn't freeze until... Minus 0 0.6 degrees. So we need to be really, really careful here. Uh, no, minus one is no good. We're going to... Actually, we might have to go minus one. Okay, we'll go minus one. And we'll see if we can get this to freeze without breaking anything. I make absolutely no promises. This might be a terrible idea. Uh, yeah, it's probably a terrible idea. No, no, no. It'll, it might work. It could work. Probably might work. While we slowly try and drag down the temperature in here, it's... Oh, what's the water coming out at? Minus 0 0.5. That's that's good, isn't it? Probably. Yeah, and it's, it's staying just below the zero degree mark. Now, it'll take a bit for that to transfer to the nosh breads. What are they at? At 0 0.7. Okay, we got to drop that one another 0 0.7 and that one another 0 0.6. I, I think we can manage that. And uh, back on Calderon, how are we looking for... 
Okay, that's at 39%. Temporal tear opener's already at 39%. We've got more than enough phosphorite left to keep this going. I think... I think, yeah, that's going to work out just fine. And they're... Jeez, they're half-charged again. we will set them all to 333 rad bolts. On the incredibly rare off chance that all three of them, or three of them fire really close together, they won't overload the temporal terror and they won't waste any rad bolts. Uh, whereas if I left them all on 500, three of them firing at the same time, a whole rad bolt might be wasted. And it's just, it's unlikely, but why, do, why take any chances, you know what I mean? Alright, just uh, let's give this another minute or two and see if we can't get the temperature down low enough to make our uh, our beautiful nosh sprouts just start growing for the love of God. They're growing? Yes, they are. Okay, they're at 0% growth, but that, that's still, they're still actually growing very, very slowly. And once you're finished, which will be in about a kilo's time, we can deconstruct you, replace you with a farm, and then we should probably be able to mutate them here. Uh, how much ethanol have we actually got left after all of this? Uh, where are we on the ethanol front? Oh, still going. Perfect, and we have maybe a four did something lumber in there. Right then, this might actually work out after all. Unless they have three traits, I don't even consider them now. Uh, where were we going to stick those? Uh, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm not even bothered to take, trying to find a place for the um, the shine nymphs. We've actually got a bunch of places that already put shine nymphs on them and any of the remaining ones just the temperatures are too inhospitable to keep them alive. All right we put in a quick farming station right there and that there will should hopefully take care of the nosh sprouts. Where does that leave us on the achievement front? Land on another planet. Okay, so we have to land on the fire planet, that one we can do, and bring back the other four artifacts. That should also be pretty easy, open temporal tear, we're almost there, and send a duplicate on a one-way mission through the temporal tear. All very, very doable. Oh, oh, it's arrived, please tell me you got another one. Uh, you've got a modern art. Yes. Modern, yep, yeah, that, that's four, that means we can bring them home. And what is a glimmering asteroid field? Tungsten Wolframite. Ooh. That's a lot of tungsten and Wolframite. That. Ooh. <laughs> Once we get Niobium, we should probably come out here just so that we can farm like t almost not 20 tons of it, but say 18 tons of Niobium per round. Well, once we. You can take the tungsten and combine that with Niobium to make uh, Thermium, so we'll be able to get about 18 tons of Thermium every trip to that, assuming we cool down the things and do all the right stuff. But you, you need to come home. Uh, yep, yeah, just, just go back there. Excellent. Oh, and they got an awful lot of scouting done. That should knock out another achievement. A couple of side things here to note. One, the petroleum here was starting to get out of control. I had to dump some of it into space. The reason being, our slicksters are producing quite a bit of it. We're up to, well, we had eight of them. I think some have died off recently. Uh, I've also had to change this. I used to get it so that every time the petroleum went above 60 or 50 kilos, we'd, we'd pump it out. But yeah, we'll have to go up to 600 now. Those uh, slicksters are actually doing quite well. Considering when we brought back a tiny amount of crude oil from their planet, all the rest of it that's making our super coolant down here is coming from slicksters. Very productive little critters. All right, uh, over here. This is our colonization module. We have all three of our duplicates back on, ready to go. However, this time we are going to the fire planet, so we need to be extra, extra, extra careful because, you know, that place is incredibly dangerous and we don't want to mess it up. We have brought 12 spare Atmo suits just in case, and 20 reed fiber. Just, you know, to cover our bases in case anything goes wrong. Uh, at the same time, we've got 10 tons of obsidian, which is the only material you can build out of there that won't melt instantly. Well, that and steel, of which we have 15 tons. And then we brought 800 kilos of glass, so we can put down solar panels, and 1,000 kilos of plastic, just in case we need it for a few items here and there. But the 800 kilos of glass, very useful, because this place has 100,000 lux. Uh, which is 10 times greater than Calderon and is over three times greater than the current planet we're on. So solar panel power will be incredibly powerful there. All right, let's uh, send a little crew away. Oh, and the uh, the reason the background colors are so weird now is we put in pixel packs. Just add in a whole bunch of extra decor. It's, uh, yeah, they're going to be very happy decor-wise. This place is actually getting incredibly hot. Some of these doors are up to 2,000 degrees, which is... Not too far off their melting point of 2400. Oh, uh, yeah, that thing can definitely get up to 2440, which... Yeah, that can melt the steel if we're not careful. Mm, I put in a, a mechanized airlock there to stop the gases from that getting through. The gases were literally pushing their way through and, and damaging that gas reservoir. Uh, at the same time, I did have to remove some of these. Well, these I haven't found a use for yet. Solid port and loader and liquid rocket port and loader. 
the theory was that we were going to use those to load and unload the rockets. I just never really got around to using them, considering manually unloading and loading them just just far faster. All right, let's uh, let's fast forward a bit until we get ready to colonize this planet. Well, we're waiting for all these rockets to do their thing. Let's have a quick check back on Calderon, and we'll see it's at eighty-two percent. And we're just about to hit it with another one. Yeah, so it's another rad bolt in there for three hundred and thirteen or something. Now, how are we doing down here? We only have two and a half tons of coal left. Uh, please tell me we don't have to go back to fuel this place up again. That would be rather embarrassing. I mean, it might happen, but it would be just horribly embarrassing. Oh, might as well open those doors while we're here. Assuming they'll open. I'm assuming at some point they will. All right. Uh, yeah, as you can see, it's up to 85. Gonna give us 86? No. No, not even a little bit. Uh, very close. Yeah, uh, but... We've got a whole bunch more bolts ready to go soon, and let's hope that doesn't require us to go back to power, because uh, that would take a... Hmm, no, we could probably get a faster ship to go there. Yeah, we could sort something out. Finally, this rocket is returning, the one containing all of our nice little artifacts. That's going to do us very nicely indeed. Assuming it lands at some point. There we go. Perfect. Uh, are you going to get scalded on the way out, Zap? on, probably. No? No, I don't think so. There's no way actually out the bottom. We've got a little bit of a, a fun problem here. If we land a rocket here, uh, no one can access it unless there's another rocket here, as in they have to walk across this to get to this to get to that. So right now, no one can get over there. For example, if we try and path them to that section, they can't get there. The reason being is there's no spacefarer module in the way. Just because of the way we connected these up, we could try and go across the top, but unfortunately, um, yeah. A minor inconvenience, just minor. Now, now that Zap is back, though, what we can get them to do is go down here to the artifact analysis station and start analyzing all of the artifacts we've got. And as well as that, we can start releasing all of these back into the wild. I am really interested to see what these all look like when we uh, take all the junk off them. Zap here is about to analyze a percolator, which is good. Uh, I think... I think the percolator was gotten from another, or, or found not on a planet, but actually in space, so hopefully that will cr crank out one of the cosmic archaeology ones. We've got six of ten, or eleven of ten and six of ten. Let's see which one this one counts as when it's finished. Come on. Okay. Please tell me it's going to be seven of ten. Uh, cosmic archaeology, seven of ten. Exit. We only need three more of those and we're done. Perfection. Next up, we have a Grub Grub statue. Perfect. That can go over here with all the rest of the junk. And there goes another one. Modern art finished. Uh, what does that get us up to? Uh, let's see. 9 out of 10. Okay, we just need one more. However, there's a bit of a problem. I went back to Calderon there just a second ago. We're up to 98%, but we've run out of coal here. Now, I made an adjustment a while back where I connected both the coal grids, and I set up this one as the priority battery. And it seems to have kind of worked, as in this one's still sort of going. And since we only need 2%, maybe if we scale that down to... I think we can just about make this. Just... that fires, that should... Yeah, oh, oh that'll definitely get it to 100%. Come on! Come on! Don't mess me about. Progress should be almost there. And if you can hit 100%, Excellent. Charging progress 100%. Can we fire it? Uh, is that it? Where's the fire button? I want to start shooting stuff. Oh wait, there it is. Big, the big red button. Okay, that is excellent. And how much coal do we have left? We actually have a little bit of coal left and it seems to be just keeping this front one powered on and all the other three are uh, off. If we had someone there, we could maybe disable them, but we don't, unfortunately. Anyway, uh, fire. Are you sure you want to fire this? Yes, I am ready for a meteor shower. No, I need more time to prepare. Ooh. Well, I suppose the question is, where does the meteor shower hit? Now, from what I understand, it hits here, but I'm not sure if it hits all of the planets at once. As in, well, it's going to fire a beam from all the way over here to there. So does it affect, you know what, I don't care. <laughs> We have everyone pretty much back home, so if we get a massive meteor shower here, it will suck, but I think we should be generally safe. Everywhere barring a few places is walled in at least twice. Yeah. 
actually maybe I should put in a little bit of walling here first you know it, it wouldn't hurt there we go we'll finish that off then we'll fire the cannon well waiting on this I think we're about to knock out, knock out another achievement namely the moment this uh, next one gets cleaned up once that's cleaned up we will have knocked out one more come on this will be our second achievement today and hopefully not quite Oh, imperative achieved. Cosmic archaeology. I don't think I've ever seen this one. Oh, yes, this is. it requires five gates, most of which are not actually in use because we're nowhere near them, and... Oh. What's that licking sound? I think we may have just hit an autosave moment. Wait a minute, we never got a teapot yet. Ooh, or the bionic arm. At least I know there's more things on the list we have to look forward to. In exploring this corner of the universe, we have found and assembled a collection of artifacts from another civilization. Studying these artifacts can give us a greater understanding of who we are and where we come from. Only by learning about the past can we build a brighter future. Wouldn't we be learned from the mistakes of our predecessors? Okay, beautiful. Excellent sentiment. Uh, that's another achievement knocked out. A great escape. That's opening the temporal tear. I think we're just about to kick that one in shortly. Did, did you guys finish the construction? Oh no, you got distracted. Okay, done. Now I am going to be very impatient and fire this off. Go for it. Yeah, I'm ready for a meteor shower. Bring it on. Okay, that is pretty cool. How far is that? Dang. <laughs> it's the Rainbow Road. All right, uh, can we actually see that on the star map is the question. Uh, oh, nope, it's already opened the temporal tear. Uh, oh, there comes the meteors. Now, the question is this. Is it hitting our home territory as well? No. Well, this is delayed. But enough of that. Let's just enjoy the fireworks. Oh. oh, thank God for solar panels. They can soak an infinite amount of meteors. True, they get, you know, injured and, you know, damaged and such like, but they don't actually disappear. Where's the rest? Uh, not really noticing anything. Phil for the tell? Okay, I think we're good. That was it? Nice. All right, before we send someone to the tear... Oh, actually, yeah, we do have to send someone there. I think I know the perfect person to send to the tear, but not yet. Uh, I think I'm going to use our current hydrogen rocket right here to launch a cargo mission. Yeah, that... Uh, oh, actually, no. We'll let them finish off analyzing all the artifacts, and once they've done all of that... Then we'll send them on their way. Zap is going to be running this cargo mission. Zap here is going to be flying this ship. It's large enough to fit on a large cargo bay and a liquid storage tank. And we are sending them all the way over to this glimmering asteroid field. It's well beyond our normal uh, re reactor, well, rad rocket range. We could also hit these ones up, but uh, despite having lots of resources here, this one is the most interesting because it gives us wolframite and tungsten. That's 12 tons of wolframite and... Ooh, four tons of tungsten? Yes, and we can just dump that liquid tungsten directly into our, our sauna, or our industrial sauna. Perfection. Off you go. Try not to incinerate everyone. Uh, no, it didn't get burned up. It, you're, what do you just... Why would you do that? There was no reason to go down there. And uh, now there's a whole bunch of boiling hot steam down here. Please don't... Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, just don't... Well, there goes the solar panels. Thank you. You're not even you're not even allowed to pass through there. Oh, that's just Why? What are you Oh I'm gonna mm. Well that's awkward. Fine. Fine, fine. Get me some ice. Uh, yes, we will get some ice, and we are going to use some ice temperature shift plates to deal with the mess you all caused. <sighs> Freaking Muppets. I just noticed that despite how boiling hot they are, the temperature's not leaking through. They seem to be perfect insulators, and they're perfectly capable of letting other stuff pass through, like radiation and things like that. 
And the annoying part is all that steam is not vanishing into the background of space, but we've made some changes to the door locking to prevent this from causing any future problems, and that makes absolutely no difference putting down those temp ice temperature shift lights. Well, wonderful. I was about to just pour some liquids over this to try and cool it all down, and then I thought, what's the point? It's, uh, it's acting as a sort of a perfect insulator anyway, so just leave it? Why not? Uh, also, I think I will change that plastic tiles up there to insulated. That should prevent any potential for melting, just in case something does happen there. And yeah, we can leave that just the way it is. Though, uh, yeah, that molten steel might fall down. Do you know what? Not going to worry about it. What we're going to worry about right now is we've got to the fire planet. Yep, we're, uh, we're in orbit. Now, let's check out what's down here. Magma. Boiling hot magma. Excellent. Welcome, Mr. Powers. Okay, I think we'll... This is our best landing spot over here. No, we'll land here. We're going to use some of that obsidian to uh, help us out. And there's one or two tricks we can use to do this. Or there's a suggestion or two I've heard that I really want to give a go to. But first, let, let me let me get all the uh, let me get all the people loaded up into atmosphere suits. The bit that bugs me the most here is Arctic Fox. Of the three people in the ship, they let Arctic Fox do the construction. Their constru construction skill is three. And there you have building impairment, meaning that they've got a negative three from that. Oh, oh my god. Millington here has a construction skill of 15, and Brendan here has a construction skill of 10, and they let the guy with three constru- mm, Just, just go away. Seriously, this happens every damn time too. Don't look so smug about it. You keep taking over priority for some bizarre reason. There we go. Oh, great, Brendan, the second best. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay, let's, uh, let's dispatch some people down to the planet's surface. Welcome to the fire planet. May it not burn you alive. All right, get down here. And we've unlocked an achievement. Well, yeah, of course we have. This is the, that's the one that's, uh... Oh, I want to say land on all the planets. Come on. Come on. Cluster conquest. Land dupes or rovers on all worlds in the cluster. Eleven planetoids? All done. Mind the gap is up to 537 tons out of a thousand. Uh, GMO AOK, -okay. we're still waiting on the Nosh Sprouts, but I, I have hope that we can get those out today. Totally tubular, we can grind out pretty quickly when we need to. And the Great Escape, we just need to send a duplicant on a one-way mission to the furthest star map destination. That's that's on the cards. That's on the cards. But for now, let's see about colonizing this. Oh, God. Uh, where is the Niobium? Gotta be down here somewhere. Give me metal. Nope. Oh, can't see it. And I'm guessing if we can get down to here, we should be able to at least dig down to some neobium. Is that neutronium? Ah, yeah, there's something down here. We just need to get a tunnel that goes straight down through here. Shouldn't be too bad. Now, this is most likely a bad idea, but I'm going to put a rocket platform right there. Come on, there we go. And then we'll put some ladder segments right there. Easy peasy. All right, I was trying to see where the... Uh... No. The background of space ends and the vacuum begins. We should be able to dig across here and... Mm, you know what, we won't dig through here and leave a bunch of that there. We just want some way of actually containing that magma, but still actually working with it. I'd like some way to mm, get down directly through here. You know what? We're just going to dig across and take as much as we can out of here just to have some building materials. The more obsidian we've got, the better. Oh, yeah, let's uh, land the rocket here. Why can't you land? Rocket height exceeds the space available. Oh, that's a problem. That's a big problem. Um, how tall do we make this rocket? 32, 33, 30, 30, 45. We need three more spaces. We need three more spaces. Um, oh, okay, okay. Okay, no, don't panic. Don't panic. We just have to dig out a hole three tiles deep and put it in it. Before everyone runs out of oxygen or the, the radiation gets them. The radiation's not that bad. It's only 375 rads per cycle. It's, uh, it's fine. It's fine. Though I've just realized if we deconstruct this rocket platform, the steel will probably fall out of the middle tile and, and fall into the magma. We're, er, mm, we'll put an obsidian tile there. We'll cancel all of that. Uh, we'll deconstruct... <laughs> uh... Okay, how was I supposed to see that coming? I didn't really... <clears throat> okay, I should have thought of that. Next time. Next time. Come on, come on, come on. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Uh, cancel all of that. We don't care. We need this done. Otherwise, you're all either going to get irradiated or die. 
Uh, also deconstruct that. Okay, now we need to dig down. Uh, here. How many tiles wide is this thing? It should be seven. Yeah, seven tiles wide. So we need this thing to go three tiles down and seven tiles wide. Uh, then we're also going to need hmm, a way out. Yeah, so a tile either side so they can get in and out. And that should be it. Oh, come on! <sighs> Fine. Okay, we just need to get a ladder uh, there. Yeah, ladder segment there should be enough. And they should be able to reach both of those chunks of steel. Which are now boiling hot. Fine. Not a problem. Please tell me I've done the math. Oh, yes. Land here. Excellent. Ooh. That was slightly worrying. And, yeah, just inside the radius. Uh, you know what? Let's get you away from the steam for just a minute. Uh, because that will be a good idea. And we'll just make some level 6 build dig commands over here. Perfect. There you go. That should... Get, get get away from the steam. Don't get yourself scalded. Perfect. Oh, but okay, it's not perfect. It was probably one of the least perfect landings, but there no one died, so on that front it was close to perfect. Excellent. Now we can change your schedules back so you can go take a nap. Sorry about keeping you awake and not letting you know eat or do anything like that. Well, we've got everyone down in mostly one piece. I say mostly one piece because with Mellington and Brendan, I now have, uh, well, some, some moderate wounds. Yeah, they kind of got scalded running back into the rocket. They were wearing Atmos suits. I keep forgetting how, like, they've changed the exhaust on the hydrogen engines, and now it's, it's just so incredibly scalding that you can't go anywhere near it without taking massive damage. Even Arctic Fox took a little bit of uh, a burn damage there. They popped out for a quick second to, I don't know, sample the local ambiance while it was still boiling hot. Then decided to take a nap, because of course they did. Anyway, we're going to uh, put in some obsidian tiles here immediately just to help counteract the just horrific amounts of radiation. We've already had someone vomit inside the rocket, so, you know, no big deal. And, yeah, come on. Yep, stop scratching. Less scratching, more building. Yeah, now you're actually under that tile, which reduces the radiation to 146 rads per second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's going to be a little bit toasty. Actually, I'll uh, leave the second layer until they finish the first. This should at least give them some way of working out here without hopefully getting even more... Just, you don't have to stand on top. Stand underneath the, the protection. Oh, you muppets. Fine, we'll do that. And then we're going to have to get the rest of this to about there and replace that with... Actually, I don't want to replace it with tiles. Otherwise, the obsidian might end up on top. We want that now, would we? One annoying problem we're facing is people keep puking in their seats in their suits because, you know, radiation sickness and such like. So it's getting polluted oxygen in here. The polluted oxygen is getting dumped into the suits, causing some minor problems. Uh, which one of you has puked in their suits? Well, it's not Arctic Fox or Millington. Ah, Brendan. And yep, there's a whole bunch of vomit. Sorry, guys. So we're going to get them to take all this vomit and just, you know, dump it into the background of space here. Uh, oh, wait, wrong planet. Habit. There you go. Oh, look, we, we made sand. Cool. Anyway, time to get the last of this sorted. We want to grab as much obsidian as we can, and then we're going to be doing a few... Oh, we can get rid of those trailblazer modules. We don't need them. We can swap them out for... Where is it? Rover modules. We'll maybe put the rover module a little bit closer to the bottom. Ah, great. Okay, so we're going to need maybe a little bit more height availability? Yeah, okay. There we go. Something like that. This should be able to eventually get up there. While we're busy installing a couple of rover modules here, there is one thing I want to take care of back home, and that is a rescue mission. This rocket here has been refitted so that it can hold two duplicates. Uh, I may have actually left Melina in there a little bit too long. Sorry, Nighthawk. But this has got uh, enough beds and dining tables and mess halls and food and resources for two duplicates handily, though we're only sending one duplicate. And where we're sending them to is Postu... Uh, whatever. Postulino? The, the postulant planet. Namely because it's got a friend here in a cryo tank, so we're going to go rescue them and bring them back home. Now, let's see how much of our solar panels they absolutely incinerate when they get fired off. Come on. Why aren't you launching? Cancel launch? Oh, yeah, I forgot to change their priorities so they could... Uh, I've set everyone so that they're not allowed fire rockets by default. It, it just... Uh, it prevented people who had bad rocketry skill from running the rockets. And off they go. 
how many of these are you going to burn to death? Uh, let's have a quick check under gas overlays. Actually, fine. Okay then. I was expecting that to be a lot more painful than it really was. Oh, and we got into that rocket through this side. <laughs> it was the only way. Alright, and oh my god, how did that break again? Seriously? How? When? Ah, god damn it. No, I'll fix it later. Back here on the fire planet, we're about ready to do phase two of our plan. Phase two of our plan is to immediately go back into orbit. We've got two rover modules made of steel. Uh, everyone's back in the rocket, even though they've got massively high stress. It seems getting sunburnt all the time on this planet because, well, I kind of not anticipated just how blindingly bright this is. It's incredible. They only have to spend, spend a small amount of time outside and they immediately get sunburned. We have to keep them under cover as much as possible, and that's not really possible standing anywhere through this section, so not really much we can do. But what we can do is send them back into orbit again. We are going to make use of rovers. Uh, doesn't really matter where we go, does it? Yeah, that seems closer somehow, but for no apparent reason that I can figure out. Okay, begin launch sequence. We do actually have 20 tiles of range remaining, so we can do this one time. Not a bother. Off you go. And let's see where all of those lovely gases go. Well, yeah, place is going to be nice and toasty. You know what? That's fine. That is completely fine. Now, once we go into the star map, what we can do is we can grab that rocket, and then we can start deploying those rover modules. Uh, where are we going to deploy you? Uh, they can use ladders, right? You know what? We'll fire one down, and we will see if that can use the ladder. So long as they can use the ladders, we'll fire the other one down there as well. How oh, about there, buddy? Oh, you don't have a move function. Tell you what, we will get you to make a ladder. How's about that? So, put a ladder right about there, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, yep. Yeah, totally works. Perfect. Uh, rover lander? That can be deconstructed. What's that made out of? 400 kilos of steel? What's the rover itself made out of? Primary element steel. Never mind. We are going to launch down the second rover as well. It was that one. You can also be deployed down there. Done. Then we can land the rocket right back down again. Well, let's hope those rockets are... Those uh, rovers are pretty good at avoiding getting killed by rocket exhaust. I think they are. Excellent. And they are immediately putting together more rovers. That's actually good to know that they can do that. They can self-build more rover stuff. Uh, we'll wait until the gas is vent before we allow anyone out. You, you, you are all grounded. Stay inside until you recover from the sunburn and the crippling fear of the dark and a whole bunch of other things. Oh god, your stress is way too high. We'll keep them inside on the carpet tiles and their stress should remain nice and... No! No, no. True. Stay inside. Stay inside. Come on, no going out there. Not yet. We'll let the rovers do their thing. Now comes the fun bit. This was the bit I was told about in the comments. Uh, these rovers can work in magma. Uh, so if we just build ladders down there... Now I've set in a door because I don't want our duplicates getting involved. I've also made sure that they're locked inside the rocket. They're uh, grounded. Though... Oh, damn it. They're allowed to use all the uh, facilities in here, so get yourself all set up. God, you, can we fit in... I was wondering if we could fit in a medical bed so we could start getting people healed up. They're all in uh, a lot of trouble right now. Let's make sure the rovers do what they were meant to do. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have, say, something down there. So we're going to wall in there with obsidian. And then we're going to wall in there with obsidian and then there. And then we're going to keep going down. We're going to use these to build ourselves an obsidian tunnel. Well, while we were busy doing this, we managed to get a seed analysis complete on one of those Nosh sprites. So, it looks like we finally got a mutation. All it took us was six harvests in this area, which is full of a decent amount of rads. Hey, why has the rads gone down so much? Oh, a thousand to eight hundred? Why is there only eight hundred and... You know what? Who cares? It's been achieved. We can now dig all of these up. We don't need them anymore. We can swap back to what we were doing. Excellent. And that means... Another colony achievement earned. GMO A-OK? -okay? Nice. That leaves us with, still with Mind the Gaff, you know what, 566 tons, we're, we're well on the way. Then we also have Totally Tubular. Yep, we're still working on that one. And the last one, The Great Escape, which I think we can just about knock out this episode. If not, we'll get pretty close. And down here, 
we have located ourselves a whole bunch of niobium. That's that's a lot. In fact, there, there may be more down here. But first, we just got to finish off our little obsidian tunnel thingy. It's a little bit slow. These rovers got to go up and down a whole bunch. These little rovers are amazing for magma operations. Only downsides, they can't dig obsidian and they can't dig abyssalite. Uh, they've only got basically level one digging. And if we check under skills here, level one digging is pretty weak sauce. Very firm material mining. So I think they can dig out igneous rock and granite, but that might be just about it. In fact, let's uh, let's give it a try and see if they can mine out that. That should be a diagonal dig build. Nope, they can't do that at all. So with that finished, we should be able to tunnel down through here using just our duplicates. Our duplicates have been sleeping it off. And by sleeping it off, I mean we have changed their schedule drastically. Uh, Arctic, Brendan and Millington, you'll notice they basically wake up to eat and use the bathroom and then they go right back to sleep. It's, you know, the perfect schedule. Millington here is probably a bad example, but let's deal with uh, Brendan here. They are going to heal at 25 health points per cycle every time, well, while they're in bed. So this actually cranks up their healing massively while they're sleeping. At the same time, this gives them a negative 20 to their stress, which drastically reduces their stress. Also, they're on top of a carpenter. Minus 35% to their stress per cycle, which is why their stress has dropped all the way to 26%. Millington, unfortunately, is afraid of the dark. That's kind of messing with their stress reduction, but they're healing quite nicely, and their stress is still minus 25% so cycle, so it's not the worst. But anyway, it's time to get back to work for you guys. Uh, I'm afraid all of the sleepy, sleepy time is over. Now that we have this hole made all the way down, what we want to do is stick in a ladder. We're going to go with obsidian all the way down, then we're going to want to deconstruct those all the way down and finish off with another ladder all the way down and we'll probably just break in here oh actually wait there's a bunch of gases in here you know what i don't think we need to break in there do we no we don't actually need to go in there at all hmm all right let's get it started at least i stuck in this door on top so that when we leave we can seal it off and not accidentally let a whole bunch of steam in come on oh yeah i should change this so uh they can leave the rocket Oopsie. I've also made sure that the door is now passable, but can also close behind them. That should hopefully... Hey, guys, stop running in and out so much. Once the door closes, it cuts off the light. Oh, it would cut off the light. No. Nope. Someone just constantly... Seriously? Hey, there we go. It finally cuts off the light when there's no duplicates in there. How long before they get sunburn, I suppose, is the question. Uh, maybe I should get those rovers to do something else. Uh, no. You know what? Just let them do what they're going to do. If they're going to be dumb, they're going to be dumb. Trying to stop duplicates from doing dumb stuff is just a waste of time. You're just going to stress yourself out. We are finally through the tasty niobium underside here. Excellent. Now we need to bring it back home, and for that we have an orbital cargo module. Namely because we don't want to be carrying around... What is this, the temperature of this stuff? 200 and something degrees, whatever. We're not putting that inside our rocket or, you know, things would go really badly wrong. Instead, just gonna store it on the outside. Uh, let's not make that sweep only. All right, everyone, you can totally dump that stuff in there whenever you want. Uh, maybe the rovers will get around to it, who cares? Guys? Oh, yeah, game's just uh, lagging out a little bit, but done, done, done. We might just actually open up that volcano before we go. I'm going to assume that's an Iobium volcano. But, uh, why not? I mean, it's a reasonable temperature location, probably. Let's hope this thing is not erupting just now. And... Yeah, I think... I think that's a well-revealed volcano. It can erupt whenever it likes. Uh, maybe we should give it some more space. You know what? Nah. Let it do what it's going to do. There's a whole bunch more Niobium down here we could go and grab, but I'm not really that interested. we got more than enough for what we need, so we might as well go home and get everyone, hopefully, not so horribly feeling. Uh, crew up... Ooh, actually, before we head back home, one last thing to do, stick in an automation wire right there. Come on, everyone else get home, though. Crew are home, all materials stored. I even stuck in an extra the ton of steel we had lying around the place. So that's all of our resources. That's all we came here for. Done, dusted, absolutely beautiful. And we'll just change this to head back home. And how many tiles is that going to take? 12 tiles? We still have space left. No, no. Just going to go straight home. No changing of anything. Warm and limited oxidizer, cargo loading. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Go for it. Begin launch sequence. And we'll leave these little rovers behind. They can 
I don't know, wander around the place? That little trick of building the obsidian tiles made doing this so much easier. Otherwise, we would have had to build doors down and use the little door trick. That is so much handier. We're going to have to use that trick when we're dealing with magma on any other planets. Oh, well. Bye-bye. See you another day. Oh, before we convert this back to uh, sleep weed, I'd like to point out just how perfectly temper controlled this is. This water is coming out at exactly minus one. Like, exactly minus one, which is the precise temperature we have set it to. The joy of these uh, well, thermal injectors or mechanized steel airlocks doing this is just... Mm, that allowed us to just keep the temperature exactly where we needed to without accidentally, you know, freezing stuff in the pipes and breaking things. Which reminds me, we can now set this back to... Uh, one degree, I think, is plenty fine for all of our... Uh, our sleep wheat needs. Eh, it might be a while until we get our hands on some more uh, sleep wheat grains, but that is okay. Now, ooh, rockets in orbit. Postulino? Yeah, uh, land here. Rocket height exceeds the space available in this landing... God damn it! <laughs> uh, we're 22 tiles of height. So we can't send back a rocket that is taller than 22 tiles in height. Okay. Okay, that's, that's, that is doable. That just means this rocket will have to return home uh, with its mission unfulfilled. That is perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Okay, but I think we're going to have to cut it out there for today. And that was all we're able to get done because I am way over time. But we are so close on so many of the achievements. Uh, if we check under the achievement run, we've got 597 tons. We just need another, well, 400 tons, well, 403 tons of resources mined from space. And we have five rockets doing that full time now. Totally tubular. We can knock that out hopefully fairly quick, I'm thinking. Uh, we might want to start concentrating on that now once the team get home. And this one here, no problems. We can fire off a dupe to that that uh, that exit point in no time at all. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck.